Number eight. What are the most dangerous parts of society? They. What do you think they're talking about? Do you think they're talking? I think they're probably talking about humans on Ground Zero Planet Earth. Well, they don't want to answer that. No. They want to talk about how society is interdimensional That's and what they want to how talk about. the most dangerous parts. Uh, our Ra used to say it's our foundational background, unexamined beliefs and assumptions that mess us up. And this is why the less dense presences are quite problematic to the more dense presences. Oh, because the misleading directions that are occurring from the astrals create uh, unpredictable dangers where there should be no danger. I hear you. What was the question? What are the most dangerous parts of society? What are the most dangerous parts of society? Dangerous to what? Right? That's a question that could be answered many different ways depending on how the question is interpreted. We think that uh, if we were looking at, for example, Ground Zero Planet Earth and how humanity is more than halfway through destroying all other life on Earth, how only 4% of mammals uh, still on Earth are wild and everything else is domesticated, 96% to 4%, well, we should stop shooting at the animals that are not domesticated, don't you guys think? Isn't it time to let that go? Possibly the most dangerous parts of society are those parts that perpetuate the status quo, since it's the status quo that's destroying all life on Earth, and will undoubtedly destroy human society as well. I think the status quo, unfortunately, is the big problem. Yeah. And the destruction, and the, there's uh, people who seem to enjoy destruction, and you can find them uh, tearing down trees and tossing bombs out of airplanes and shooting at people who look different than they do. People who uh, like hurting things and like breaking things are, are probably the most dangerous parts of society. Those that enjoy cruelty. Yeah, that's what someone just said, who's sitting on the meditation cushion in that much higher oh. dimension room. He said, presences who enjoy cruelty. Mm -hmm. and he's really sad about that. He's very sad. I see a lot of nodding. Yeah, I feel nodding in mm -hmm. that room. Those who enjoy cruelty. Those who enjoy cruelty, and they're all mm -hmm. nodding mm -hmm. and feeling sad. Sad. Maybe they're supposed to also have solved the problems of cruelty in addition to the problems of lying, cheating, stealing, bullying, fighting. I hear you. Maybe they're supposed to have solved the problem of cruelty. That's a tall order. Yeah, I hear you. But humanity right now, being the dominant species and uh, destroying everything, like bottom trawling is destroying the seabed life and releasing methane, more carbon dioxide, into the atmosphere. And we're destroying it on the land by ripping down trees and everything else. And destroying it in the skies also with our polluting airplanes that we just seem to insist we must fly around in. That's right.
And many people, when they're flying, they even close their blinds to show how cool they are, that they're blasé about the miracle of flying. That's right. Showing that they uh, are unable to appreciate or unwilling to appreciate that which is being given to them, which is bad karma, by the way. They're not going to be given a whole lot next go-round. Right, exactly. When, why would they? Because they don't appreciate it. Our bet is that the viewer who asked for this will not enjoy <laughs> it. <laughs> As our bet also. We are supposed to take this moment to remind viewers that these host lives are simply channeling opinions of angels and godly presences who are the highest vibration voices that we're able to connect with right then going through the clouds of the dead in the astral dimensions as high up above the clouds of the dead as we're able to reach in any particular moment and with any particular series of inquiries so this is a training that is it takes decades to get good at and it takes a decade to even stumble through. That's the feeling. Maybe we try that question again, whatever okay. the question was. Question number eight is, what are the most dangerous parts of society? Well, we assume that the viewer means human society. Yeah. And we'll go with that. And that limits the question profoundly because it limits the question to this planet dimension combo pack. And some other viewer says that he, he refuses to answer the question that way because that leaves out that which is the most damaging part, which is the interdimensional aspects where presences in the astrals are claiming to be God and are misleading denser lives and it, that voice up there believes that to be the most damaging aspect of society. Yeah, I hear you. And that there are so many people who claim to be listening to God and they're listening to somebody, but often those same people are big proponents of, for example, the military. And does anybody remember the Ten Commandments, Thou shalt not kill? Anybody? And usually those same people say that they believe in that whole book of knowledge, book of wisdom, and then how can those two things both come out of the same lips? He doesn't want to talk about that question anymore. Okay. So he believes that the, the most dangerous aspects of society are uh, astral fakers who are purporting to be godly presences and severely and profoundly misleading uh, denser life forms who then are carrying out destructive actions pretending or purporting to be doing what God wants them to do. Question number nine. What is the biggest mistake you fear humanity will make in the 21st century? Perpetuating the status quo. D not changing. We're not changing. What we're doing is killing all life on Earth. I it's killing all life on Earth. This is scientifically proven. We have to stop. We have to stop. We have to stop fossil fuels. We have to stop factory farms. We have to stop mining and extraction efforts. We have to stop the destruction of the forest. We have to start once again being responsible for our waste stream, which we had begun back in the 70s maybe, but we've ceased doing that. Recycling has become a sham where we just ship our garbage to Indonesia or exactly. other places like that. We have to start living as if all life actually mattered because it does. We have to stop destroying God's planet. This is God's planet, not humanity's planet, to destroy. And divinity is not 
happy about that. And anybody with uh, good reasoning skills would be able to come to that conclusion. They're not going to use this. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think we should continue. I think we should continue because then I won't kick myself. Right? So friends, especially the viewer who asked these questions, we think that you're probably not going to like the answers and we're sorry about that. And this is what they're saying. And our job is to simply relay, relay the questions up, relay the answers down. That's what we're doing. Our job in this particular setting is to relay. Hold the portal open and relay. It's kind of like translating. Yeah, that's a good way to describe the, the job. Feeling. Mm -hmm. yeah. The job. And so that's what they're saying. And it is the translator's job to translate accurately. And so if you feel we're presenting the questions inaccurately, then that would be something that we would apologize for because our attempt is to read them off the page exactly the way they hit the email. Exactly. And from there, the answers come from wiser minds above, and they are wiser than us. And that's the reality. And there was some question about our big error as a species, humans' yeah, big error. Yeah, that's right. And the big error is arrogance. Arrogance. And it's in all of us. And we have it also. We struggle with it every day, just like everybody does. That's what they're talking about. And that's what they're talking about right now, is the big error of arrogance is leading us to destroy everything, thinking that we have the right to do so, and it doesn't even make sense. And we're desertifying the planet and destroying the soil, destroying the ability to raise food. And heads up, people get very grumpy when they don't have enough food. It's a problem. That's what happened with the Vikings, exactly, by the way. Exactly, that's what they're talking about. There were some volcanic uh, eruptions that destroyed uh, Scandinavia's ability to raise crops for maybe 10 or 15 years. And That's they were right. They were starving, so they took to the seas and started raiding their more southerly neighbors. They were starving. That's right. And by and large, Scandinavians are a gentle people, and so they had to kind of like work up into a rage so that they could do what they felt they had to do. Then this is what happens. Even gentle people get very nasty when they're hungry. Exactly. And that links back to the question of the most dangerous parts of society. And someone in that higher dimension room is, it isn't always um, who you think it would be. Who you think it would be. And so much depends on context. And so much depends on if they had a good breakfast that morning. <laughs> it's true. And so much depends on if someone cut them off in traffic. And then that arrogance is living under the skin and it's all just kind of... Bubbling. Bubbling. Seething. Seething is a good word. And they're talking about the arrogance and they're talking about some research that the angels had us do sometime in the last couple of weeks about populations of different species on this planet at the moment and where humans stand just in terms of scale of numbers because the other great apes we were aware had a smaller number and then it turns out that there's something like the only species that are more overpopulated than humans, wasn't it something like rats and chickens? Rats and chickens are the only species more numerous than humans, and the question of biomass versus nose count or beak count uh, is in there because of ants. Ants That's are right. also on the table as very numerous, but ants are lots of different species. Humans are one species, and the definition of a species is that which can interbreed and produce viable offspring. Exactly. And chickens, rats, <laughs> and humans uh, lead the parade. So the only uh, species whom define I see as more expendable than humans are rats. A kind of brown rat. I'm sorry, I don't recall which one. Yeah, that's brown right. Brown rats and uh, chickens. 
that's right. Brown rats, chickens, and humans are the most expendable species on Earth. 7.8 billion humans, and the next closest great ape is chimps with 300,000, and then it drops down to maybe 100,000 for orangutans and a La well, maybe 150,000 for orangutans, depending, and maybe closer to 100,000 for gorillas. And then there's only maybe 30,000 bonobos, and that's it for great apes. That's all the great apes that exist. That's right. So we can see that we're severely overpopulated with humans. Because the next closest is 300,000, as in one-third of a million, as in much less than 7.8 billion. But there are 20 billion chickens and something like that. So these like brown that, rats. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And that leads us to question number 10. Well, I think we should ask, does it answer the question? Does that answer the question? What's the question? The question was, what is the biggest mistake you fear humanity will make? in the 21st century. Perpetuating the status quo. Is that what that was? Yeah. Is? Do you hear anything else? That's no, all. No, that's yeah, the only that's answer that's they're the going biggest to talk about yeah. right now. Perpetuating the status quo. And then question number 10 is, how do you envision the end of life on Earth? I don't think they're ready for the actual answer. No. We'll stick with this dimension then. 